what up? Turns out the pond's not ready yet, but we did get a crap biscuit load of other really cool changes. Let's check some of them out, tiny pirate style. So most of the update was pretty awesome, like super cool. But we got this, terrible third person camera clipping in doorways at player bases. A slight problem and hopefully an easy fix. I'm not really too upset about it, but it is annoying to try and get some of my chest in my storage shed now. The boot prints, I love it. And so does most of the community from what I've seen on social media. Not only does it really dramatically show the diminished size of the player, they literally appeared overnight, for me anyway. It's like some regular sized person took a walk through the yard and I missed it somehow. Damn shrunken perspective. I'm just glad I didn't get squished. And this might upset you hardcore base builders out there, but I think random map changes like the boots or other terrain related changes maybe even seasonal changes to mark the passage of time would be really cool. It makes the world of Grounded both big and small feel more lived in and real and only adds to the shrunken survival peril. Like, don't build your base in potentially high traffic regions of the backyard. And I don't mean high traffic for our shrunken butts. I mean places the normal sized people might step with their big boots while, I don't know, mowing the lawn? You gotta think more strategically now that you're a shrunken survivalist, trust me, I would know. Science. That's awesome. I really like the announcer. Is there going to be a PvP mode eventually? Because the announcer s seems like it's something that would be in like a PvP mode sort of thing. Just it's it's weird that it's just it's just raw science. But I like that. It's cool. Uh, and, and a PvP mode might be cool on this map. I don't know, like two teams, tower build challenge, insect hunt, last man standing, maybe even a miniaturized battle royale. Let me know in the comments, would a PvP mode be fun in this game? And if so, how would you want it to work? So they changed the build wheel. It's got some different colors. It's a little more organized. I, I appreciate it. Some of the material icons in the inventory got changed. It makes it easier to differentiate them, so hopefully there won't be any more duplicated item symbols in our shrunken inventories. They added some new colors and some new symbols for our trail markers. It really helps being able to mark the backyard, especially if you're new to being tiny and haven't learned the layout of the map yet. And learning it will take some time, because at this size, it's massive. I, I haven't even been everywhere, and I've been playing a lot. The red dot that marks unanalyzed items in your inventory also now has an exclamation point, so don't miss it. Cool, cool, cool. Perks you can unlock as you perform in-game activities. Chop down 50 blades of grass, and you unlock Grass Master. Kill a crap biscuit load of ants, and you gain Ant Annihilator. It's almost like a level up system, except it's rewarded like a trophy or a challenge system. And the limit of three active perks never allows the player to become too overpowered, thus maintaining the difficult challenge of trying to survive at a centimeter in size. And to be honest, that is my biggest concern for a game like this, that without proper balancing, a player can too easily become nearly invincible, which in my opinion ruins the whole theme of any survival game. That being said, I think the game developers did a great job with the mutation perk game mechanic. Good job, Obsidian Entertainment. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Okay, we're good. Doesn't see me. The crow is awesome. Totally scared the crap biscuits out of me. Like when I first saw it land on the shrink ray laser above my itty bitty grass village. It doesn't really do much for now though, but you can find its feathers around the map. And just an FYI, if you're like really desperate to find a feather, like you've been searching for hours and hours and you can't find one and you're like on the, the post and on the Twitter and you're like, where is one? I can't find it. Well, there's actually one down in the larva cave over by Spade Gulch. So you can go over there and check it out. Just be ready. You're gonna have to fight a bunch of larva because there's a bunch of larva down there. It's a larva nest. Have fun. 
So what I really like about the bird, or for that matter, the boot prints and the changes to the terrain, is that it serves as a reminder that despite how comfortable you start to feel in the backyard, despite how incredible that fortress of grass you've built is, despite how good you've gotten at bashing bugs, you're still just a tiny, insignificant little nothing to the regular sized world. And all that work you did can easily be undone by a rampaging crow hunting for breakfast or a normal sized lawn care professional simply mowing the lawn. And I know, I saw a lot of people were disheartened or outraged to discover that their bases had been destroyed during the update. But look at it as part of the shrunken experience. If all you want out of this game is fun base builds, there is a create mode, you know. But if you play this game for that rush you get experience to the world as a shrunken survivalist, then world-changing, base-destroying backyard events should be welcomed threats beyond your miniature control that add to the gameplay experience in a shrunken survival game. I actually hope at some point that they make the bird hunt grubs or worms on the ground, and if it spots little you, game over. I like the idea of there being threats you can't combat due to your miniaturized size. It really helps to immerse the player in the circumstances of the game's universe. And to be honest, I would like to see more future giant-sized threats added to the game. Even at the expense of my base, which literally almost got crushed by one of the new boot prints. Like, I step out the door of my miniaturized house into the boot print. I think it was great. And if you think big threats like birds, lawnmowers, or other things like, I don't know, wind or flood hazards from weather effects would be a fun addition to the game, then let me know on Twitter at TinyPirateGamer. And also let me know some of your ideas for what you want to see in Grounded's future. They made other changes with the update too, but these were the big ones that I noticed. If you want to look over the patch notes for yourself, there's a link in the description. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, consider hitting that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more creative Grounded related content in the future, you can subscribe to my channel and join my tiny crew by ringing that little bell so you will always be notified whenever I upload a new video here on Tiny Pirate Gaming. You can also see some of my artwork and photos of my life as the world's first, and as far as I know, only miniaturized gamer by following me on Twitter at Tiny Pirate Gamer. Thanks for watching, and until next time. Arg, matey, watch your step. There be a tiny pirate here.